my colleague uh, Janata Nidgaru, Harichandra Garu, Shruti and Advai, Mr. Ravi Gupta, CEO Elites, also Mr. Abhishek, and also uh, the invitees here, the delegates coming on the you know, participating in this uh, today's workshop on uh, national waste alternatives. Also, all the students here who have come from all over the city and various participants from self-help groups and uh, uh, volunteer organizations, NGOs who are working for environment in uh, Hyderabad. A very good, uh, 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 good morning to you again. I'm happy to participate in this uh, event today. I took charge on uh, Saturday evening and uh, yesterday morning I was organizing I was, you know, uh, waving a flag for this uh, uh, marathon, Hyderabad marathon, and today I'm here. I think these are all very auspicious signs for me to immediately have to take over charge as a uh, commissioner of uh, this great city. Thank you once again. Uh, you know, I, I, I would like to start by, by giving a few uh, facts of uh, waste management in our country and all over the world. So, to put this subject uh, in a perspective. By 1950, by 2015-51, I was reading, we require about 1,452 kilometers, square kilometers of uh, land for landfilling of waste basically in our country. 1,452 kilometers, 20 meter height, you know, is equal to our city up to our uh, outring road. You must know outring road is ring around our city. It's about really that much of area. If you can just imagine the kind of waste that will be piled up on 20 meters height, that is the kind of land that is required. But the sad fact is that the students and you know, organizers here and everybody should know is that even to get one square kilometer of area in Hyderabad for land filling is highly difficult. People have huge resistance. And just imagine in our, all our country we require the 1,400 square kilometers to get it, that the size of the city of Hyderabad, something like a 2,000 hectare saving year is required. People will not part with their land and the government land sources, resources are dwindling. So it's a huge challenge, I thought, in this you know, perspective, in perspective, the kind of challenges that lie before India and also the city of Hyderabad and the state of Telangana to treat our wastes, waste generation, municipal solid waste management, and all that. And I think every citizen should you know, realize how important is this conference and how important it is to have alternatives for waste management and what are the alternatives we have at hand. Uh, Sri Janardhan Nidigaru has you know, uh, told you about what is happening in Hyderabad, what kind of initiatives have been taken up. We are doing well in Swatch ranks. Swatch Hyderabad has become a, you know, a kind of a key word in the lingo of our Hyderabad city. And we are also thankful to our Prime Minister who has brought this transformation at least in talking and also in doing also for that matter. Putting waste management on the national agenda in a very, very prominent way. A few years back, I was in Toronto for a conference. There, we were meeting up with startup companies. So they asked us, what are the technologies you need in India which we can take down? And they said that a good toilet which uses less of water or no water is a very good opportunity for us. That's what is required. Because if you look at in India now on since Vach Bharat, you know, word EF is very important for us. Open defecation free towns and cities and villages. But everybody, uh, you know, there are about 150 colleagues from IAS uh, with us. They were thinking that why did this fellow become this issue now? Because that shows the backwardness of our country. It used to be a taboo. I think it's no more. We should be grateful to a great leader who said that, who brought, who broke on the taboo on this world and brought national waste management, such toilets, everything onto the national agenda and we are doing really well. I also congratulate Janathan Adigaru for his initiatives on this front action. Now, so when I said that 1,450 kilometers, square kilometers of Hyderabad you know, is required for future, for 2015, 20-bit site of uh, and a waste, it immediately, when I read that, it immediately recalled to my mind a movie I have seen recently. It's called Wall-E. Have you seen Wall-E? How many of you have seen Wall-E? Yes. 
Wally is a beautiful movie. You know, uh, I think about 10, 15 years ago, I don't remember when it was taken, but I seen it very recently. It's about a dystopian movie. A dystopian movie is about a movie which shows that you know, in the damaged conditions and you know, you know, the degraded world and all that. In that movie, Wall is a name of a, a computer or a, it's a robot which go, goes and collects waste and you know, you have to see that movie to see how beautiful it is taken. And then, they must have made millions of dollars. It's one of the highest classes. Out of waste management, out of waste management, they made maybe about 400 to 500 millions of dollars of Money has been made by showing how waste can be beautifully managed, how waste can be beautifully and romantically shown. Janadhan Nagar was like a drag because how much money made. There is a lot of huge value chain in the waste management. I thought this movie is a connection of how we can make value out of uh, money out of waste management. And also, what kind of problems are there? In that movie, small green plant, they'll find that becomes a source of life for the people who are, you know, who left the earth and will come back and live again. It also shown me in rural India, you know, whenever I think about waste management, I think about a movie by, you know, by Mel Gibson, it's called Braveheart. In Braveheart movie, if you see, when he loses his uh, lover, uh, you know, she gets killed and raped and all that. So Mel Gibson, you know, gets back to the village, you know, he'll be walking on the uh, horse, I mean, he'll be on the horse riding on the slowly, and he'll have a sword behind him. He has to take the sword and kill the people. If you look into that, what strikes me is that this is a movie taken in, you know, 1300. I mean, it's a story of Scotland in the year 1300, how they get freedom and all that. The village is shown there. The village has, you know, typical village, any South Indian village, any North Indian village, which has lost a lot of waste thrown around, garbage pits, you know, all this muck will be there and we will be walking through that on the pass. I am sure the Hollywood movie makers must have spent at least 10 million dollars to make their city. I was thinking, if the Hollywood makers have come to India, any village will do without single naya spending, spending, they can shoot a movie free and go. That's the kind of waste we have. I'd like to put in perspective what kind of waste we have in, in, in the cities and also in, in the rural India, basically. So what to do for this? If you look into statistics, they say that only about 70 to 80 percent of waste that is produced is collected in India. And about 30 percent or 25 percent is uh, you know, recycled or segregated for that matter. Recycling is very less. <coughs> so what we are doing with it? All of you have at least one cell phone with you. Maybe not children, they are not allowed. Some of you have two cell phones. The cell phones are doubling up. India will be the biggest consumer and fifth largest e-waste producer in the world actually. But e-waste recycling, value extraction out of that is very, very minimal in our country. In, in 2000, by 2015, it's expected that we may be anywhere on top of the pyramid in e-waste production and e-waste e e e e coming out of uh, India. Basically. We have a huge problem at hand. One statistic says that at the rate of 1.3% growth of waste, man waste in India, right now we have about 62, uh, I think, uh, you know, million tons per annum. It will be somewhere around 400 million tons by 2051. <coughs> That's a very conservative you know, waste generation uh, prediction. Basically. We produce about, in, in Hyderabad, it's about 500 to 600 milligrams grams per, uh, you know, per person. But the other one is anywhere around 1.42 to 2 kgs of uh, waste is produced. So, we are very proud of our growth rates, economic growth rates, you know, 12%, 13% we boast, saying that no other country in the world has this kind of economic growth rate. We also have young people in uh, more than anywhere, youth is born in India who are addicted to, it's good actually to technology and all that. But this kind of growth that is coming, urban growth that is coming, it's, it's the 400 million tons by 2050 is a very, very conservative for that of uh, this rate. It could be anywhere around 1,000 million tons by 2050, some reports say. So, if you have to live happily, if you have to live sustainably, all the children who are there, they will become dads, they will become moms, and the children will be there after 20 years. If you have to hand over a good environment in Hyderabad, in our city, in our country, one has to think about alternatives, what this conference is talking about. So we look at alternatives. The first thing we find is that we need an alternative funding in government. We need an alternative funding in our state, in our city, to manage waste basically. We cannot have wall kind of robots because they are very expensive, they are futuristic. 
maybe they are available in other countries, but not in India. So, where from this funding will come is the major question. Second question is, what kind of awareness is there among people, among general public? Are they thinking about waste, how it is generated? Are they thinking about you know, cleaning the house and throw it out? When they are come out of that mindset, this is another major issue. Third one is, as I said earlier, technology is very, very important. Technology, how cheap it can be, how fast effective it can be, how quick it can be, how quickly you can adapt to technology adaptations, how quickly you can bring those technologies from, from world over to our country. These are the, I think, uh, three issues which will, you know, funding, technology and public awareness. These are the three issues, uh, three radical parameters that are going to decide what kind of alternatives we have in India for waste management. Take it to funding. It's expected that at this point of time in our country, we require anywhere about 5 billion US dollars investment per year. 5 billion US dollars investment per year in India to take care of our waste. It's not available with the government. The government has a lot of other you know, agenda to uh, set this money, to invest this money. So we require uh, private participation in this one. Public private partnership, they call a lot of you know, fashionable names are there, EVO, OFT, uh, bill come, finance, transfer, all these kind of things are there. But I think we need to you know, provide a good policy environment. Fortunately, of last four or five years, government of India as well as the government of Telangana also has taken a lot of initiatives to bring in public money. Uh, I'm sure there are you know, public entrepreneurs are here, by like people who are sitting here, who are set up Luka Face from Mr. Abhishek. This kind of initiatives are required. Private funding is very, very important. You cannot think about any small measures now. You have to think about very, very huge measures, very large, uh, huge measures are required in public uh, in private funding. They require good return on the investment. I think government should be able to provide that. JHMC has also been in forefront in these kind of initiatives. Uh, Ram Canver Engineering is one initiative where uh, private uh, entrepreneurs are coming in Hyderabad city. And Blue Cap is a very recent initiative. But hugely it's required, and huge investments are required. And the technology is much, much available to hands of private firms and corporate firm, corporate uh, world. They are able to invest in R and D and able to provide uh, you know, better technologies. I think we'll bring those technologies to India. And that's where the young minds here are very important to bring the technologies. Most of people have to become engineers. None of the people are putting these are humanities. It's very important to the also very important. But when you become an engineer, can you become an entrepreneur? Can you produce some kind of a technology which can reduce, recycle, and you know, segregate our waste and make them useful products? Can your technologies, some of the technologies you will be you know, putting in your science laboratories and also in exhibition, science exhibitions. I think students have to think about how to bring in technology to your doorstep, at your home, in your street. So this technology can convert our waste into useful products and minimize the waste, minimize waste generation. And as far as some public awareness is concerned, you have to seriously the question of livelihoods, how you are living, how much waste you are generating, what is the pen you are carrying in, uh, in your pocket. So this is a plastic pen, this is a horrible waste. You know, in India, nearly, you know, every year, whatever the waste we are producing, anywhere about 11 to 12 percent what we are producing with the plastics actually. This plastics continue to be there in the environment for next maybe 100 200 years. Maybe if you don't uh, you know, eliminate plastics from our lives, for which Egypt has recently enacted also, saying that plastics we are going to eliminate. And there are some measures, some migrants are there which we cannot use. And you have seen the exhibition, students should see. There are alternative products are coming. So how can we bring in technology to eliminate from our life waste that cannot be degraded biologically? Or waste that can be easily degraded, easily degradable by mechanical means and machine means. That's where I think uh, students have to research and put in your efforts. And then coming to uh, public awareness, you have to begin and tell people that the alternatives for this is that, you know, the waste generation is that, you have to reduce waste generation itself at home. Segregating. GHMs has taken up something like, uh, I think 44 lakh twin bin seven, you know, Dispute all over the city, but people are not using them. They are using it for alternative uses there actually. So alternative uses is very important. Bring it to the public mind. You know, voluntary organizations, NGOs, private firms, everybody has to join hands with the government to tell people that 
reduce our waste generation, minimize the waste generation, avoid plastics, be environment friendly. These are, the, I think, the three uh, issues that are very, very important to think about, to discuss about alternatives of uh, waste management. So this afternoon, I'm sure the experts here will be deliberating on these issues today and tomorrow and come up with the viable options for the city of Hyderabad as well as for our country to come up with good alternatives for the happy living. With this, I conclude and thank you very much and thank the organizers.